Hydrogen has the potential to be a pivotal tool in achieving global net zero emissions, and by 2050 could account for up to 18% of annual worldwide emissions reductions. Hydrogen Refueling Solutions, a French designer and manufacturer of hydrogen refueling stations, offers turnkey solutions from compression and storage all the way through to distribution. I sat down at the COP28 talks here in Dubai to talk to the Deputy General Manager of Hydrogen Refueling Solutions, Olivier Dez. COP28 Dubai, a very exciting time. What's your company doing here and is this your first COP or do you come to these quite regularly? No, it's, we have the chance that to, to be, be able to exhibit to the COP this time. It's the first one for HRS and we are developing and supplying uh, hydrogen refueling station for uh, hydrogen vehicles. Are there any big announcements that you're hoping might come out this year's COP, especially when it comes to hydrogen? Yes, we see, we see that all the country today uh, think, see that we need to change, we need to move to uh, green electricity and we have the chance that hydrogen is one of the solutions to store energy and also to decarbonize mobility. Very excited to hear about your solutions a little bit more. Let's take the conversation over to our studio. Olivier Dez, wonderful to have you here at COP28 in Dubai. Thank you, Laura. Well, hydrogen is one of the key areas that was announced by COP28 president that is going to have the biggest impact within the shortest time frame. Tell us more about hydrogen within this new energy mix. So hydrogen is a, a way to store electricity, a way to transport energy. So today hydrogen will, is a way to move to decarbonized solutions. And the beauty of hydrogen, it can also be used for mobility, decarbonized mobility, and that's why we are here today. Tell us more about your company, Hydrogen Refueling Solutions, and what exactly is your mission statement? HRS for Hydrogen Refueling Station was created in 2004 by our chairman and CEO, Mr. Hassan Rashedi, and we moved to refueling station by 2009. So we have a quite extensive knowledge about how to produce fueling station. So HRS moved to a new strategy in uh, 2021, and to be, become global. So now we, we decide to, to deploy our uh, product in Europe, of course, because we are coming from France, but also Gulf area, China and US. And we are proposing solutions to refuel vehicles. That's what we call refueling stations. How mainstream is hydrogen right now when it comes to the transport sector? And what sort of growth potential are you seeing right now? So today we need to see that transportation is a big uh, activities in, in the earth and produce a lot of CO2. So by uh, changing the way to doing mobility and decarbonize mobility, it will have an important impact. Um, today you have two solutions to decarbonize or to go to battery vehicles or to go to hydrogen vehicles. Both of them will, will continue to work because they have different usage, where a battery vehicle is more for uh, normal daily usage and hydrogen more for intensive usage, where uh, you have more heavy duty and uh, light utility vehicles. Is it true that sort of electric vehicles sort of took the spotlight a little bit from hydrogen and now it's sort of coming into its own? Yes, in the past that we, are, we were talking about a lot and mostly from battery vehicles. And today we see the limit of battery vehicles when you're talking about continuous usage, intensive usage, because you need to charge the battery and charging ba battery take times. So that's where hydrogen, uh, it's a, maybe a solution and will be a solution uh, because big advantage of hydrogen is that you charge quickly the vehicles, just as an example, a normal car, you can charge it in five minutes. A bus is a truck, it takes 10 minutes to fully charge them with an autonomy about 400 to 500 kilometers. So you can have a similar usage as a fuel vehicles, but using a fully decarbonized vehicles. I mean, that's a game changer, charging yeah. with that sort of time yeah. limitation. That's a big difference with battery vehicles. Be able to have your vehicles available at any times. 
We can take an example. If you take security vehicles, police or ambulance, you don't want to wait to be able to use it. So that's where hydrogen will make this type of vehicle usable but fully decarbonized. Well, there's a lot of competition in the market when it comes to new technologies, new innovation. But obviously with batteries and hydrogen, they can actually work quite nicely hand in hand. So how do you sort of collaborate to make, make use of, of, of both these types of technologies? We, can, we do not target the same usage. That's why we, we are complement. Um, when you need loading, you need intensive usage, hydrogen is a solution. When it's a daily usage and you, you don't need the car all the time, battery is more easier to use because you can plug it anywhere you don't want to if you don't want to charge it fast you can plug it anywhere so that's make the big difference hydrogen for uh, professional i would say and battery for uh, daily usage and that's why because today uh, you need infrastructure to move to i would say daily usage of the vehicles so today there is not so much unfortunately uh, charging uh, infrastructure that's why we are here today to develop it um, and that's why it will take maybe a bit of times to have hydrogen available to anyone so as you mentioned you know hydrogen can act as a pivotal tool in trying to get you know get to net zero and could it potentially account for 18 percent of emissions reductions by 2050 i was hearing as well so with, with, when it comes to industry, why is this pivotal for the heavy industry sector and the hard to abate sector as well? Industry, they need, they need to have uh, the possibility not to think about how they will use the vehicles or the tools or anything. So that's why today, for example, um, forklift are moving a lot to hydrogen because it's a way to have them available at any times. So that's why today uh, people like to move to hydrogen because it's a way to use the, any type of vehicle like they use it today, a fuel vehicles. I want to go back to your company for a moment. Mm -hmm. We had a really nice look at some of the, uh, some of the, the actual so solutions that you've got on display um, here at COP28. So tell us a little bit more about the design and the structure and the ease of use as well. So as we see, uh, today, you, fueling uh, an hydrogen vehicle is similar to fuel, uh, uh, fuel vehicles. Uh, you just have to plug the gun, push a button, and it will fuel it uh, automatically. Today, we have the chance to show, to, to present to the COP our new design of the dispenser. So it's the public part that was uh, designed by uh, Philip Stark. Uh, we enjoy a lot to work with him because it's a, a, a very nice guys and bright uh, people that have a lot of uh, nice ID. And uh, today, this type of uh, element, we want to also to, to, to change the way that the people see hydrogen and see this new technology. It should be beautiful, it should be different than going to a fuel station. There are still a few misconceptions and you know there's a bit, there's an element of risk and leakages and there are still a few sort of teething problems as we go into this this energy transition so what are those challenges and what is the road to success to make this fully mainstream mm -hmm. today the main challenges for uh, for hydrogen is that it's it's as you say it's a new technology so all new technology need uh, time to be uh, reliable to be uh, fully performant so but we, we gain up with the time that uh, we're we developing fueling station six the last uh, 15 years to have today on the market reliable product. And of course, uh, one of the challenges, and uh, it's something that's where we do not do any compromise is security. Security first, because uh, like fuel, like gas, hydrogen is inflammable and explosive gas. So security is the first for uh, HRS when we are designing and developing uh, station. That's why we have set up a uh, R&D team that is taking care of that and also anticipating the, the future needs of hydrogen and uh, the future technology that we need to develop to be safer, faster and better. Uh, on, the new on the new site we have a dedicated area where we do uh, R&D development but also continuous test and we keep on this uh, testing area all the, I would say, V0 of our fueling station 
a bit like what is done in the aircraft industry when you know when they, you keep the, the first uh, the first aircraft and then that, that gives us the ability to continuously improving uh, the quality and the security in our equipment. How much of a growing need do you think there's going to be when it comes to hydrogen refueling stations in the future on a global scale? G give us a sort of like an overview of, of region by region. Mm -hmm. Today what we see is that I would say in the past the most active was Europe and especially Germany. France a bit on, uh, behind that. And what we see today accelerating very fast uh, is China because China decided to for all the heavy duty mobility should be using hydrogen and we see also US that are moving quite fast to move to, uh, to hydrogen and decarbonize also mobility and we really think that uh, using hydrogen it will bring to the, uh, the user uh, the same feeling that they are doing today with fuel vehicles so that's also a way to move to decarbonize mobility without too much changing the way to use vehicles an incredible insight there. Really fascinating to see what you're doing. Uh, really wonderful things at HRS. And thank you so much for sharing with us here today. Thank you very much, Laura, for having this interview with you.